So capstone project number one, you'll find in your textbook. And uh, what I would recommend is that you read through these these projects, whether you're going to do both of them, or, I'm, I'm sorry, what, regardless of which one you're going to do, I think it's worth a uh, while to read through the projects because there's good information in both of these. And so this project begins on page 416 and it's called Capstone Project Number One, Mechanical Working Drawings. All right, so uh, what a mechanical working drawing has that's a little different, let me get a pointer out here real quick. I'll just use the laser pointer today. Um, I'll just skip through and show you a mechanical drawing. Okay, so here are the elements of a mechanical working drawing. The first page, usually of a set of working plans, is what's called an assembly drawing. And so we have never drawn an assembly drawing. And what an assembly drawing is, it's all the parts in the mechanism and they are shown in a manner of how they go together. And uh, a good way to show how they go together is to do what you see in, in this view. And this is called an exploded isometric assembly. So the parts are pulled apart, and that's what we call the exploded part, that they're pulled apart like that. And so this was, is called an exploded assembly. And this is an example of an assembly that's not exploded. This is like a collapsed assembly where everything, we can see how it all goes together. But I've done a section view in here so you can see what's going on on the interior. If, if this piece right here were not a section up here, and if this were not a section, you really couldn't see much about what's going on here. So that's where the exploded assembly, it pulls your parts uh, away from each other and it shows them as separate parts. And that's important because I wanna, I'm gonna pick on this part right here. This part is called, in this assembly, is called the mount. And um, coming off of the mount, you see we have a leader and we have a circle. And what these are called are balloons. And the top number on that is a part number or an item number, depending on, on what terminology you're using. So this would be part number one in this assembly right here. The second number below it indicates the number of these that are in the assembly. So this is part number one, that's the top number. There is one mount needed for this assembly right here. So that's what the bottom number represents. Now, if we follow that part number one over to the parts list area, and we look right here under item, we would see item number one, the quantity Q2, QTY, there's one, and then we have a part number for that. And then under description, it refers us to a sheet. So we'll see more information about this part right here. So as, as I was saying, uh, this is a typical assembly drawing, and this complies with the ASME standard for assembly drawings. So what that means is it has a parts list and the parts list can go here. It can go in the upper left corner. It can even go in the lower right corner. It just can't go up here. And the reason for that is that the upper right corner is reserved for what's called, what's called a revision history block. And what that means or the use for this block is that as this assembly goes through its life cycle, and there's likely to be some changes made to the way that, that these parts are designed if, if they find problems, they want to improve them or whatever. And so what they do is up here using this block is they document the changes. And the changes even have to be signed by an engineer or somebody to approve those changes. And the changes come through what's called an, you see this ECO. Uh, ECO stands for Engineering Change Order. Now, this project that you're seeing right here, this assembly drawing is not what you're drawing in 1405. But this is what you would draw when you take DFTG 1433, which is the mechanical uh, drafting course that you could take next semester if you wanted or take in some future semester. It's required for most of the degree plans with, and so you know, you're probably gonna take it sooner or later. I teach this course, I'm not teaching it next semester, but if 
if you're postponing taking the course because you're an architectural or a civil major, uh, in some future semester, you might look and see if I'm teaching it. If, if you want to take it from me, that would be great. Uh, this is actually from students in my class, this project right here. Now, there's one thing I want to point out about this in the title block. Right here in the name, the this entire project is called Air, Air Cylinder. That's really what this thing is right here. And you see this A-S-S-Y. That is the approved abbreviation for assembly uh, according to ASME, okay? The other thing I want to point out to you right down here is that it says uh, sheet one of four. And so in an assembly drawing, as the assembly is usually labeled as the first sheet. And then if you have multiple sheets, and usually the multiple sheets are the details, which would be the parts with dimensions and everything, you list those right here. So this would indicate that this, that this entire project has four sheets, and this is sheet one of four. Your second sheet would be sheet two of four, three of four, and four of four, like that. Now, just to clue you in, if you worked for a big aerospace company or mechanical design company, um, it would not be unusual for your number of sheets in a project to number in the hundreds. Okay, so, you know, I worked on projects that we would be like one of 400 and something. And um, so, of course, it takes a lot of people. It takes a huge team to create that many drawings. And so, you know, just to give you the scope of what goes on out there in industry, they're like if you went to work for GM or Boeing or somebody like that, uh, they do big projects. All right, so I'm going to go to the next slide, I hope. Anyway, come on. Here we go. So here's kind of a, uh, a zoomed in view of a balloon. And you can see, so the part number, this is part number two, and on the bottom, that's the number that, of these that are required in this uh, assembly. You know, actually, I'll point out, I think we've got this one part right here, part number five, and then the two underneath would indicate there are two of these rubber gaskets that are in here. And so here's part number five. There's another part number five right over here on that one. Okay. Um, what we're going to use when we put in the uh, balloons in our project is we're going to place these balloons in paper space. We're not going to put them in model space. And the reason for that is that because a balloon is a 2D object, if you, if you rotate your view, your balloon rotates and it gets skewed and it doesn't look round anymore. So what you need is to place the balloons on the viewport so think of it like the view is the the uh, balloon is on the glass and it's pointing at the 3D model in the background. <clears throat> All right. So the other thing we're going to do, we've created a uh, <clears throat> pardon me a custom uh, multi leader for these balloons. And so you don't have to go in and draw a circle and do all this stuff. Uh, you'll see that. I'll, I'll talk about that next week uh, or in the week after, how you get in there and put those balloons in because it's all customized and it's going to come in real fast. Okay, so here's a, 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 you know, a detail of your parts list uh, right here and then your title block. And as I wrote right here, ASSY is the approved ASME abbreviation for assembly. All right. Now be sure and put the Y on there and because that would be the unapproved one. And uh, but anyway, assembly, comma, air cylinder. This is, you know, this is why you took English comp so that you would know to put this to write it like that. We don't say air cylinder assembly. You know, we're very proper in the mechanical engineering world. And you'll see in the next, I think maybe the next slide, let's see if it gets into it. Look right down here. Now we've switched. To sheet two of this project and now we're into the details of the air cylinder and so now we say details comma air cylinder right be sure and put that comma in there or I will mark it so I'm going to back up one slide your first sheet is going to say assembly comma air cylinder your second sheet would say details comma air cylinder. Now you're not doing the air cylinder project. So yours is actually going to be details comma 
And the name of your project, if you do this one, is called the Toe Stop, T-O-E Stop, okay? It sounds weird, but it's a type of fixture that's used to hold something in place while you work on it. That's what your project is gonna look like. Okay, but I wanted to show you, remember I pointed out earlier when I showed you the assembly drawing that part number one is called the mount, okay? Well, these are the details for the mount. And so it doesn't say details mount down here. It says details, and then it has the name of the entire assembly. But on the sheet, there is a, there's a note right here that points out just the mount and its part number. And underneath that, it tells us what the material is, how many are required. Look at this note, some hidden lines omitted for clarity. Look at that. I mean, you know, you have to be good at English to write notes like that. And then look right here, it says UOS chamfers are 0.03 by 45. So you have some of these chamfered edges, which are like the beveled edges. UOS is an approved abbreviation by the ASME. And what it stands for is this, unless otherwise specified. That's what UOS stands for. So it's an abbreviation that's used on technical drawings so that you don't have to write unless otherwise specified. You can just write UOS and that's approved. All right, so let's look at the, at the details of the mount. We start with a principal view right here. And then you can see we've got a cutting plane line that goes all the way through it with the arrows pointing down. So what that would indicate is that this view up here is what you would see if you were standing behind the cutting plane line and you were looking straight down on this view. So look at this section view we have up here. And you can see why this drafter decided to use a section view because there's so much detail inside this part that in order to dimension all of that and avoid dimensioning the hidden lines, they had to do a section view. So this is a good example of where a drafter would make that decision to do a section. Okay, and so as I told you guys when we were doing sections in chapter eight, when the engineer gives you this part to draw, the engineer does not know that you should do a section. That's a decision you need to make as a professional drafter designer, right? So you're the one, you're the guy who'll decide whether or not this is going to be sectioned. Now over here on this view, uh, we have just a left side view looking in and we're using that for a couple of dimensions. But imagine how many hidden lines would be in this view with all these cylindrical things that are going on we see a whole bunch of cylinders all of these are diameters in here these are cylindrical cutouts there would be a ton of hidden lines in here and in fact when you put all those hidden lines in you can hardly tell what's going on in this view so look at note number three some hidden lines omitted for clarity so we're telling the people that are looking at our drawing that uh, some of your hidden lines are missing, so don't go looking for them. We're trying to make it clearer, and that's why we took out those hidden lines. Now look right up here, and you'll see a little, uh, I don't know, this is called a detail, and this is a removed detail. Yes, go ahead. Oh my gosh, you can't see the screen, I'm sorry. So y'all are gonna y'all are letting me go through all that without telling me y'all are very nice. <laughs> oh really? It just flipped off. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you for telling me. Okay, so uh, I don't know how much of this you missed, but you know I was talking about how this is the front view with a cutting plane line and the top view here. This is the section view, and you've got all these cylindrical features that are inside here, holes and things at different depths and different diameters. And what I was pointing out is that right in here, you would expect to see a bunch of hidden lines in this left side view. But we have this note, some hidden lines omitted for clarity. Okay, and so we're telling the viewer that, you know, you're not going to see all those hidden lines, and that's to try to make this clearer and UOS stands for unless otherwise specified, the chamfers are 0 0.03 by 45 degrees. And so that X in that case is 0 0.03 by 45 degrees. So by putting that note on there, anywhere you see a chamfer, you know, which like there's a chamfer right there, it's like a beveled edge that 
unless it's specified otherwise, the size of that chamfer is going to be 0.03, which would be how long it is this way by a 45 degree angle. So what we're seeing right here in this little bracket thing we have, uh, this is a detail and we've actually scaled up the detail because there's some small features that we wanted to mention in here. There's called a, what's called a filleted groove and this is a groove that goes all the way around and it's, uh, it's rounded and it's probably going to be some kind of a rubber ring or something that's going to go around that like a gasket. So anyway, so that's what we're seeing there. And uh, so this is an example of details. I'm going to back up one here if I can. You know, I think something's happening when I, when I do that. So sometimes it may kick you out of uh, being able to see the view. I don't know why it would do that, but it seems to be. Okay, so again, um, let's see. This is going to be sheet one of four. And starting with your first detail, you start with sheet two of four. Your next detail would be three of four and so on like that. Now, I want to point something out to you here. The part name and number, part number one and this number and the mount, those have to correspond with what's in your parts list. And when you have several hundred parts, that can be a lot to keep up with. Okay, so uh, you it's on you to keep all of this stuff straight right here and keep your numbering the part number one in the assembly, uh, which is part number one right here, is also part number one in the parts list. And it's also part number one in the details down here. Okay. So I think I've pretty much covered all of that. So here's an example of what your project looks like. The toe stop assembly. So it has three principal parts. It has this part here, which is called the toe stop base. It has, which is part number one. And you can see part number one right over here. Part number two right here is called the cleat. C-L-E-A-T, part number two. And then part number three is called the cleat pin, P-I-N, all right? So the way this works is that this part sits on top of this part right here, and this cylinder goes down into that hole. And you see these angled edges you have right back here? Well, there's corresponding angled edges here, so all of this sits right on top of that. This goes down into the hole, and you can see there's a hole through this right here. You can see that hole going through. Well, when that goes down into this part right here, this hole aligns with this hole, which goes all the way through. So when you put this cleat down on top of the toe stop base, this line and this line, this, I'm sorry, this hole and this hole are all aligned. And then you run the cleat pin through the entire thing and it locks this into place. And there's even a small hole here. So when this goes through, you could put a pin through here. There's a pin called a cotter pin that you could put through there and hold that into place. Now over here, we have what's called a hex cap screw, which is a six sided bolt. We have a washer. We have a second washer down here and we have a nut and all of those line up and they all go through this hole here. So when this goes down, the top of that hex cap screw sits in this recess right here. So it doesn't interfere with the bottom of this piece when it sits on top of it. So you can see the design that goes into this is making sure that this cut is deep enough that this will sit below the surface. So that when this comes together, uh, that it won't interfere. The other thing you can see is that, you know, the designer has to make sure that the hole in this part lines up with the hole in this part and that this can go through all of those. So all of that gets into the tolerancing and the way the designer visualized this part. Uh, the other thing about this is you have threads, you have screw threads on this thing. And when it goes down through there, you put a washer on it and then you have a threaded uh, nut over here. And so this is probably mounted to something else. And then this is how you hold the whole thing down is through this this screw thread right here in this uh, 
hex cap screw. So the length of that screw has to be long enough to fit all the way through this and whatever else it has to go through, and then it's tightened on with a washer and a nut down here. All right, so this is what your project is gonna look like. Now, these parts here, the hex cap screw, the washer, and the hex cap nut, you do not have to make drawings for because the company is just gonna purchase those from a, from a manufacturer of washers and nuts and screws. So we don't have to detail those out, but we do account for them by, by giving them a part number. All right, so that's why we've got part number five, part number six are the washers, and part number four are the hex cap screws. So we come over here, we can find four, five, and six over here, and then part one, part two, and part three. So that's what our parts list looks like. And we name the first sheet assembly, A-S-S-Y comma toe stop. All right. Now I want to tell you where the, all of this is in your book. Uh, as you go through the book, even when you get over to like page 424, you can see the book even has a discussion of threads, screw threads and fasteners. And, um, it breaks down what a screw thread note looks like. And I can tell you, this is another one of those places where uh, at ACC you can learn about, learn what screw thread notations look like because I promise you they're not teaching it at universities. So when an engineer has a t is building a team of people to do design, uh, they're going to depend on the drafters and the designers to specify screw thread. So understanding screw thread is really an important thing if you want to become a designer because you'll be very valuable to a team of engineers if you can specify screw thread. All right, so if you look over on page 426 and 427, you're going to see the assembly that I just showed you. You're going to see the parts list. The parts list is already drawn in the prototype drawing, but you do have to go in and type all the all this stuff in, okay? As I said, you'll put the uh, balloons in in paper space using a multi-leader, so you won't really be drawing those, but you'll be placing all of those things. So here are your three parts. These are the three parts you're gonna have to draw, and you're gonna have to draw like the necessary views, like the front, the top, the side, and put all the dimensions on them. You're gonna have to make a dimension style and uh, follow the ASME standard for placing all your dimensions on here. And when you're finished with making your front, top, and side view for each one of these parts, you're gonna have to draw an isometric view, okay? And if you remember from chapter seven, we drew some isometric views. And uh, there are some videos in um, Blackboard for all of this isometric drawing. Then over here we see part number four, which is the hex cap screw, and five and six, the hex nut and the washer. All we need to provide there is enough information for the purchasing department, if we were working for a company, to order, to order the hex cap screw, the hex nut, and the washer. We don't have to detail those out. All right, so when you open your prototype drawing, the prototype drawing is available in Blackboard, and you're going to open the pr prototype called Mechanical Working Drawing Prototype. And when it opens in model space, you're going to see these three rectangles. And one is called Assembly, and one says Details 1. That's for your details that go on Sheet 1. I'm sorry, that, that'll actually be Sheet 2 of your drawing. This will be Sheet 1, this will be Sheet 2, and this will be Sheet 3 but in model space, you're not numbering your sheets. So over here will be your second sheet of details will be drawn in here. And so I wanna correspond it to when your project is complete, the rectangle labeled assembly will have the exploded isometric view of your parts, all right? And the second rectangle, this one right here, is going to have the front, the right, and the top view of the toe stop base and the cleat pin with all their dimensions. And then in this rectangle here, you're going to have the front, the left, and the bottom view of the cleat. And then you're going to have the three notes for the, the screw, the nut, and the washer that will go over here. 
And don't worry, I'll show you more finished uh, versions of this here in just a second. All right, so this is what your prototype drawing is going to look like when you open it up. This is more like what those views will look like uh, as you start to draw them. And here's a, a, a hint. Draw this last. The reason you need to draw this last is for some of the parts or some of the things that you have to draw in here, you need to take the distances off of your multi views. OK, so you actually need to draw these first so that you can construct some of the stuff over here. And an example of that is you have a countersunk hole right here. And so it's like, how deep is the countersink? How deep does that second ellipse go down right there? Well, the place you're going to find that is by drawing your countersunk hole and actually measuring how deep it is on like on the top view or the right side view and then transferring that distance over here. So draw your details first, and this will be the third thing that you will draw. And uh, I think it even says something about probably drawing it last. OK, so let's go to the next slide. All right, so I put a help sheet in Blackboard that this is one of the sheets that's uh, on that help sheet. And so when you open up your, your prototype drawing, if you turn on the miter box layer, and you may remember this from chapter four, we had a layer named miter box. So when you turned it on, there was a rectangle with a 45 degree angle on the miter box layer. And then we constructed the front and the top and the side view within that rectangle. And so what you're gonna draw is your front view of the toe stop and if you look on page 427, you can see all the dimensions that you're going to use to draw your front view. Then you're going to put a cutting plane line through it, just like you did in chapter 8 when you did section views. And so what we're going to imagine is that we're going to cut the part in half. We're going to stand on this side above the cutting plane line and look straight down on this part after it's been cut in half. And we're going to draw what we would see. So we have a full section up here. All right, so we're going to have a hatch pattern we'll add to that. And here's where you can see that the countersunk hole and some of that other stuff. Then we're going to have a right side view. And so this is what you would see looking in or if you rotated this 90 degrees toward you. And you know, I said there's a hole that goes all the way through this and that this pin is going to run down through that hole. Well, this is that hole. And so the hole goes down and intersects another hole. And so you have to think of that as two cylinders intersecting each other. And back in chapter two, we talked about that when two cylinders intersect and they're not the same size, where they come together creates a curve that we call a saddle. And so that's what we're seeing right here is this saddle shape. And you actually project that across from where, from where this hole intersects this inside circle right here. You're going to project those points across. But we do say it's optional. If you want to draw that straight across, that's OK. But if you want to be really correct on this, you can construct the saddle. So I believe we put a, a video in on drawing the saddle so that you can, you can check that out if you need to. But you can see the light lines here that we're showing how everything projects. So like once you've drawn this view, you can project over to your 45 and down and you, you know, so you might draw this, this shape right here and project that up and over into here. But you might draw your counter uh, board and your counter sunk holes and project those over because those are going to be your hidden lines over on this side. And then here's your cleat pin. You'll need a uh, like a front view and a side view of that. Plus, you'll need dimensions on all of this. So you're going to get your dimensions from page 427. So that's that's all the dimensions you need to put on here, unless you have some uh, reference dimensions that you add to it. OK, let's go to the next slide. So this is your second set of details. This is the cleat. And you would you would draw like a front view, a left side view, because we want to show this 
this is that angle piece that mates with the other side over there of the uh, toe stop base. We, we don't want to show this as a hidden line. And, and if we showed a right side view of this, this would all be hidden. Well, we need it visible so that we can dimension to it in the profile view and also dimension to visible lines. So you'll put you'll be dimensioning to the to the left side view here. There's also that hole that goes through this cylinder. So you have a cylinder, which is this hole, intersecting a larger cylinder. And again, you're going to get a saddle shape in there. And again, we're going to make that optional for you to draw it. So you can just draw it straight across if you want. But if you want to try to you know, create the saddle, you can do that. So what we're going to do with our from our front view, instead of drawing a top view like we normally do, we're just going to rotate it 90 degrees toward us, uh, toward the bottom, and we're going to draw a bottom view. And, and actually what I'm trying to do here is make a point of that when you get into industry, not everything is going to be front, top, and right side view like we've been drawing. It's perfectly all right to draw front, left, and bottom view. Uh, everybody in industry interprets these drawings as orthographic projections, you know, so they're all orthogonal views. And as long as they're on the right side of, of the front view, by the right side, I mean the correct side of the front view, nobody cares. And then also you'll make notations for your hex cap screw, your hex nut, and your type A plane washer over here. When you start to dimension, you're going to create a dimension style. And this is all given to you in the chapter or in this project. And so as you work your way further back, you can see, like if you have your book available to you, let me tell you a page to look at. I think it's going to be 429. If you look at 429, <clears throat> there is a sketch. And... Uh, this is actually the way I used to plan sheets out. You know, before I started drawing them up, I would sketch out, or I could sketch this for another person to draw. And <clears throat> I wouldn't go to great detail, but I would just sketch real quickly and say, here's what, what I want, or here's what we need to draw. And so there's an example sketch. And if you go to page 430, you can see another example sketch and with some notes. And then if you look over on page 431, you can see a sketch. I actually made the, all these sketches. This sketch is just a quick isometric sketch of how I thought that the um, exploded assembly would look with its parts list. So, you know, I've put, a, I've put most of my thinking into a sketch, and then I'm going to start drawing it, right, and catting it up. Now, if you go to page 432 and 433, there are the instructions for drawing a uh, isometric view of a counter board hole and a and a counter sunk hole okay and then you're going to get to page 435 and let me see if i can go over here so let's see what slides we have yeah so on page 435 <clears throat> it's going to show you a 3d model uh, of your entire toe stop assembly. And so if you do the toe stop assembly, you're going to draw the isometric exploded assembly, which is two dimensional. It just looks three dimensional. You're going to draw sheet two, which is going to be the dimensioned details. You're going to draw sheet three, which is going to be dimensioned details. And then you're going to have a fourth sheet that's actually going to be a 3D model of the whole thing. Now, you know, we just did 3D modeling, and if you remember, we the way we started a 3D model is we took the 2D views and we used press pull and we pulled them up and extruded them and we subtracted and things like that to build these parts. So really, once you have drawn your two-dimensional views of this thing, it's not very difficult to turn it into a 3D view. So for example, like on, on the uh, cleat pin right here, I would just take the front view of that and cut it in half and make it a region and do a revolve, just like you did last week when you were drawing the flange bearing. Now, before I scare you off on doing this project, I want to point something out to you. 
This 3D uh, hex nut, the three-dimensional washer, and the three-dimensional nut are actually in the prototype drawing as uh, blocks, and they're 3D blocks. And so you'll just be able to insert this block in and this block in and this block in when you need it. You don't have to, to model those in 3D. You'll have to create a 3D model of the cleat, the toe stop base, and the cleat pin when you make your 3D model, and then you'll have to line the whole thing up. So we have a video for to help you with that if you need the help. So I'm going to back up here. So you're also going to draw it as an isometric. So like I said, this is all two-dimensional. And to give you another, uh, some more help on this thing, you see this, this screw that you have here and these washers in the nut? Those are already drawn as blocks and they are in the prototype. So the only thing you have to draw isometrically is the cleat, the toe stop base, and the cleat pin, and then you just insert these blocks and you want to line them up with this hole right here. So you'll draw a line up out of that hole and straight down and make sure everything gets aligned. Now, in order to be able to put all this together, you know, I said that this, this part right here goes straight down and that this cylinder fits into that hole right there. Uh, you can't draw it that way and fit it on the sheet. So what we did is we brought a, a phantom line straight up out of that, then a phantom line at a 30 degree angle, and then a phantom line straight up that goes to the center of this piece. So we've pulled it apart, but we've kind of uh, drug it over a little bit. And that's typical in a, a lot of times when you see these in assembly drawings. All right. So now I'm going to show you what the whole thing looks like. This is what sheet number one will look like if you do capstone project one. All right. This is what sheet number two will look like if you do capstone project one, except you'll have dimensions on it. This is what sheet number three will look like, except there will be dimensions. And these are your notes over here. And then you will also create, really you're duplicating this sheet as a 3D model, okay? So if you choose Capstone 1, this is what you'll be working on for the next three weeks, okay? So, um, you know, you there's plenty of stuff to do. You might finish it in two weeks and you'll be finished with the, with the course. The other thing I wanted to point out is that on all of these projects, the sheet size that we're using here is 17 by 11. And uh, so you're still going to print these out as PDFs, but we're not using an A size sheet. We're using a larger sheet. We're using a B size sheet. So this is like two eight and a half by 11 side by side on this project. So 17 by 11 for each sheet. So sheet one of three, it says right there, sheet two of three with all the dimensions, sheet three of three with all your dimensions. And what I'm showing you here is actually the check print. So once you send me <clears throat> all of your sheets with all the dimensions and everything, when you think you're finished with this project, you send it to me and I'm going to look it over and then I will send you a check print. Okay. So just like before, you'll have one shot at, at doing a check on this and then you'll send it to me for a grade and it'll be 30% of your grade. Okay. So now before I open it up, <clears throat> for questions, I want to talk about Capstone Project 2, which is an architectural working drawing. And what you're going to draw in there is going to be a floor plan. This is not the floor plan. This is just an example floor plan. And just like we learned <clears throat> when we drew the guest cottage, you know, you're going to dimension to the centers of windows, the centers of doors. You're going to have switches and lavatories and showers and all kinds of whatever it is that you have to have. You're going to have all those blocks and everything else in your floor plan. Uh, you may even include, now we're not going to include it on here, but I wanted to point out what an electrical legend would look like if you added it. So you can make this into a block. And if you worked for an architectural firm, you could just stick this in somewhere on a sheet. And so you would see what a gas outlet looks like you know, what a switch looks like and so on like that. So we've seen this switch here. We did that on the guest cottage. We had several switches in there. We had a 120 volt duplex outlet on the guest cottage. We had a GFCI outlet, outlet ground fault circuit interrupt. 
And then let's see, here's a new switch we're going to have in this project. It's a three pole switch. And uh, what this is a switch where you walk into a room and you, you flip the switch and the light goes on overhead in the room. And then when you walk out through a door or a passage through the other side of the room and you turn off the switch and it turns the same light out. That's what a three-way switch, that's how you represent it, is with a small three right next to the switch. Um, we've got our usual stuff. I wanted to point something out to you on this. Oh, right here. You see that circle and then it says SD. That stands for smoke detector. There are like five or six smoke detectors in the capstone project too. So here's an example of an elevation of a house. This is not the capstone project. This is just a sample of uh, elevation. And you can see there's a lot of notations that even go on the elevation views of a house. Right here it says roof pitch 10 colon 12. So it's telling us what the angle of this pitch is, but it's hard for us to see what that looks like in this view because we're really, we're looking at an inclined plane, right? This is an inclined plane. It's a roof that's running away from us. There's the pitch is further away from where we're standing. But in the side view, which I think is your next slide, here we see that roof pitch from the side view. And now it makes more sense. But instead of writing 10, 12 pitch like we did before, now we're going to draw these two lines right here. And we're going to write 10 and we're going to write 12 on the horizontal line. <clears throat> and so this is considered uh, the pitch of the roof is called a 10, 12 pitch. And the rise of this roof is 10 inches for every 12 inches of run. So think of it this way. If for every 12 inches, so for every foot that it runs horizontally, it rises 10 inches. And then you connect those dots and that gives you your pitch. So this is the symbol for a pitch notation right here. This is a symbol for a pitch. So this is a the pitch on both sides is the same on this roof right here. And so we'll see that here in just a second when we talk about our project. So um, one of the ways that you can create elevation views and elevations are, you know, like your front, your right, your top and so on view of your house is you draw your floor plan first. And then from the floor plan, you project where your windows and doors and roof lines and all that stuff are going to be. So this is the guest cottage with everything projected on it. And so you've got a front view, a side view, a rear view, another side view. And what you do is you, you set it up so that in your layout tabs, it will show you just this view right here. And then the, the next layout tab, may show just this view right here, but it would be rotated 90 degrees. So you can kind of customize your layout tab so that you can have a, a front elevation, uh, a right elevation, a rear elevation, and a left elevation. Now, sometimes people, instead of saying front elevation, if this faces south, they will label this as the south elevation, and they would label this as the north elevation and the east and west elevation. Okay, so Capstone Project 2 has two 17 by 11 sheets that are required. And you're thinking, well, that doesn't seem fair because the toe stop has four sheets. Well, there's a lot more work in, in this drawing than there is in that other one. And it will take you longer to do. I mean, it won't take you longer to do on the whole, but it'll take you about as long to do two sheets as it will take the people doing Capstone Project 1 to do four sheets. Okay, that's just my experience with this. So it just takes longer to draw the floor plan and the elevations than it does to draw the, the other sheets. So this is what your sheets will look like when they're finished. The floor plan, the finished floor plan, will look something like this. So it's going to have all those blocks inside there. It's going to have all the dimensions. It'll have a title block and everything. And you can even name it. You can give the name of your company and your address. You can make up an address and put on over here. And this one says that this is sheet one of three. Now, the reason there's, we're saying that there's three sheets, even though 
it's only required that you do these two sheets is that <clears throat> we have a couple of extra extra credit things that can go with this. Uh, the third sheet could be a foundation plan and the fourth sheet could be what we call a mortgage survey. It looks like a site plan. All right. So that's the floor plan. This is your elevations. So you're going to have the front view of the house and the left side view of the house with all the notations. So you're going to have your roof pitches. See that 1210 right there. And you've got your chimney and everything else is going to go in there. Now I'm going to back up one. I want to show you something. So when you walk into this house, you walk in the living area. If you look to your left, there's a fireplace and it has a hearth, which is like a raised area. It's got a couple of windows. If you walked in and you look to your right, the dining room table would probably be sitting right there. And if you looked back in this direction, you would be looking into the kitchen. If you walked out this door, you would step onto a deck and there's a little closet kind of thing that opens onto the deck and this is where the water heater is. So this is actually a water heater closet. If you walk down into this area, of course your bathroom would be on the right. You would have a bedroom here with a closet. There's a linen in the hall. If you walk through this door, there would be the larger bedroom with all the 120 volt outlets and also a closet. So this is like a two bedroom cabin with a water heater closet over here on the side. So now I'm going to go to the elevation view. So there's the front door. That is the window that is over the kitchen sink. So here's the kitchen sink. There's a window right there. So to orient you to that. And what you're seeing right here is that water heater closet in its side view. And this is the water heater closet in the back view. So the door would be on this side over here of the water heater closet. And this is that porch. So this is the side door that you walk out onto this porch. And if you open the door that's right here, you could get access to the water heater. I'm going to back up again. <clears throat> so in this water heater closet, you have to have a gas outlet. You have to have a 220 volt outlet, a 120 volt outlet, and you have to have a water faucet as well inside there. So the plumber and the electrician have to put some stuff in here. There's also going to be a water faucet out here. I think I've got a bigger view of this we can look at. So you can see the, uh, the front and the side view. This thing sits on a, on a foundation, right? And that's what we're seeing here. And here's that foundation. And we don't really know how tall that foundation is going to be because we're not on the site when we draw this thing. So what we're going to do is draw the foundation 18 inches tall and uh, then they will adapt that to whatever the site requires when they get out there. Okay. So here's our floor plan zoomed in. And I want to point out a couple of things. On the porch, when you walk up, there's the front door. There is a cedar post right here. And that holds up. It's right here in the elevation. It holds up this side of the porch over there. And so you draw that eight inch diameter cedar post. There are two steps we're drawing, you know, out there on the site, they may have to build six steps. We don't know. We just put steps in there and they can figure it out from there. Um, wanted to show you, let's see. Oh yeah. When you go out onto the deck, you can see the gas, the 120 volt, you can see a cold water outlet and you see a 220 volt. You need a 220 volt outlet out there <clears throat> in case someone wants to have an electric water heater instead of a gas water heater. Uh, when you go into the bathroom, there is a sink. Let me see. Maria is asking, do you have to do both capstones? You get to choose which one you want to do. So that's why I'm talking about both of them today. Uh, so that's why I wanted to go through them all so you can get an idea for what you're getting into with either one. Okay, so there is a sink right here and there's an outlet for like a hair dryer, 120 volt, and that has to be a GFCI. And then right next to the sink, there's an outlet and it has to be a GFCI as well. And so pay attention to the little details when you draw this thing. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to point out, you see right here, it says HB. Uh, what that stands for is a hose bib. 
H-O-S-E, like a water hose, hose bib, B-I-B. That is a fancy name for an outside faucet, okay? So this is your outside water faucet that you could hook the water hose to. There is another hose bib right over here, right off of this porch, okay? And so <clears throat> you draw those in so it tells the plumber, you know, that they've got to put that in and stub that out so that they can uh, mount all that stuff after the house is framed and everything. All right, so um, your drawing will not look like this, by the way. This is done in Revit, R-E-V-I-T. This is that 3D modeling uh, BIM program that I've talked about. And if you want to learn how to use Revit, <clears throat> next semester you would enroll for DFTG, DFTG 2431. That's the Revit course. So what I did was um, I asked one of our uh, more advanced architectural students uh, one time, I said, hey, how would you feel about taking Revit and modeling up the cabin that you drew in 1405? And so he did that, and this was his concept of what the inside of that cabin would look like. Now, to me, it's kind of modern compared, to, the cabin is not a modern looking cabin, but this is pretty modern on the inside. But I think it does give you a good view of what you would see if you walked in the front door and you turned to your left and you looked. <clears throat> right here is the hearth, okay? The hearth is a, in this case, it's a raised hearth. Uh, this is a place where like sparks might come out and land on, or you could put lumber, or you could sit there, or whatever you want to do. But that is the hearth, <clears throat> and you're going to see the hearth. Let me back up right here. You see that right there? That is the hearth, and this is the fireplace right here. So the fireplace is actually an insert that you buy and you place inside there unless you've got a real stonemason who can build you a real stone fireplace but those are pretty rare anymore all right so you walk in the front door there's the living room if you turn to your right you're going to see the dining room table and then this is the kitchen in here <clears throat> there's a door going out over here to the porch this uh opening right here takes you into where the bedrooms are and the bathroom all right, so I wanted to show you, let's see, if you, so let's look at this project. <clears throat> project two, uh, Capstone Project two begins on page 446. And pretty much everything I've talked about is covered in the reading there. And then on 453, <clears throat> pardon me, you see the uh, examples of the floor plan and the elevation. And, but look on page 454, and what it tells you to do is to open the ARC working drawing prototype. ARC working drawing prototype. So this actually needs to be changed right here. This doesn't say ARC working drawing, but the prototype is in Blackboard, just like it's been on all your other drawings. So you're going to go to Blackboard to open this up. Uh, I don't think I said that on Capstone Project 1. The prototype is in Blackboard. Now, I will show you that because I'm going to show you Blackboard here in just a minute. But you're going to open up the ARC Working Drawing prototype, and you're going to save it <clears throat> into your home drive and call it Cabin Project. Then you're going to make those layers. If you look in step two, you can see all the layers you're going to make and you're going to assign colors to them and everything else. All right. So we're getting more serious about drawing a floor plan now. We're putting in, you know, a bunch of layers and that we can put everything in on. And then right below the layers, it, there's a little note on how do you enter architectural units of measurement. And where this is going to be important to you is right here. When you start to draw your floor plan, and you can see this sketch on page 455, you're going to be typing in like 12 feet, a foot mark, dash zero, and pressing enter. So you notice when I said 12 feet dash zero, I didn't say to put an inch mark in. You don't need to put an inch mark in. So if you're going to enter 24 feet six 
for a length of a line, you would just type 24 and a foot mark dash six. You don't need to put an inch mark in because AutoCAD defaults to inches when you are in architectural units. All right. So when you do an offset for the wall and you want a four inch wall, you just type four and enter. You don't have to type four inches in there. But what if you have a fraction? Let's say that this line we're drawing right here were 15 feet, nine and one half inches. You need to enter it like this, 15 and a foot mark, no dash, and just put your inches, then a dash, and then put your fraction, and then press enter. So that's how you would put in this length right there is by typing it in like that right there. You'll notice there's no inch marks on there, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys a really good hint about drawing this right here. If I was drawing this thing, I would start with the polyline command instead of the line command. And when you draw a polyline, what it does is it makes one entity with, that is a bunch of different line segments. And uh, so you could think of it as it's a contiguous line, all right, where all the lines are contiguous to it. So here's what I would do. I would start this drawing, I would open the, I would start the polyline command and I would pick a start point and I would start drawing and I would make my way all the way around, okay? I would come all the way back to my start point with a polyline and then I would press escape. And then I would type offset, or I'm sorry, I'd pick the offset command and I would type four for four inches, for that's how thick the walls are gonna be. So I type four and press enter. I would pick the polyline and then I would just pick to the inside and it will offset that polyline four inches. And that's gonna speed things up for you. If you draw these as separate lines and then you go in and you offset each line four inches, you're gonna to have to come back in and trim every corner out. Okay, where if you offset a polyline, it's just going to give you, you know, an, a, just a smaller image of the same thing, four inches inside. Then what I would do is explode both of those polylines. So they go back to just being lines again, because in the next step, <clears throat> let me skip over. What you're going to be doing is like taking this line here and offsetting it the distance that it is here and offsetting here and offsetting four inches and so on, just like you did with the guest cottage. So let me show you where that is. If you look on page 456, I don't have that slide in this slideshow right here, but the next slide or the next image on page 456, you can see all the offsets and trims that you're gonna make to put the interior walls inside this guy right here. So. I just drew this rough like an architectural designer might draw it and give it to you. And then from there, you, you'll start to make your, you know, your really nice floor plan that you're going to draw. So just to point out a couple of things, this is where your fireplace is right here. And over here, this is where that water heater closet is going to go. Okay. Now, I said there's a whole bunch of symbols inside this thing. There's like windows and doors and baths and all kinds of stuff like that, bathtubs and sinks. So what we have is a drawing called the cabin symbols drawing. And you're gonna open up the cabin symbols drawing and you're gonna see that all of these things are drawn for you, but they're not made into blocks yet. So what you're going to use is the create block command and make a block for each one of these things. Okay. And you can see inside that window right there, you see that little circle with the X. Well, that is a point. And what we want you to do is pick that point for the base point for that window. But we don't want you to put that, that point as part of the block. So you're going to snap to that point when you check, when you pick the insertion point. But when you pick the parts of the block, you're going to pick all those lines and that text and everything, but you're not going to pick that point right there. Okay. So there are videos, as I said, for this stuff. You'll also create a dimension style, just like you did with the uh, guest cottage. 
And so once you put all your blocks in and you get this whole thing drawn, you're going to add interior dimensions and exterior dimensions. And there's some help sheets that show you how far to space things out. And you see this dash line that goes around the edge of your floor plan? That represents the roof overhang. So the roof overhang of this house is 18 inches all the way around. So that's what this dash line is. So along the back edge of your house, the roof overhang is the furthest thing out that you will have. It'd be the furthest thing, what we call plan north here on the north side. So I would measure from there out 27 inches. And remember, this is in model space. You're going to measure out 27 inches, put your first row of dimensions, then measure 18 inches, put a row of dimensions, and then measure 18 more inches and do that. And you're going to do that on every side as you go around. So you can see the from the fireplace, that's the thing sticking out the farthest on the left. So you'll go 27 inches, 18 and 18. Over here on the right hand side, the porch, the edge of this deck is the farthest out. So you're going to go 27 inches, 18 and 18 on that. And uh, then down here on the bottom, the porch steps from the porch steps, you'll go down 27 and then 18 and 18. But you'll be doing that later. I mean, you know, you're not going to get to the dimensioning for a little while. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to point something out here in this water heater closet. See that circle with a WH? That's the water heater. This dash line you're seeing right here is the overhang of the port, I'm sorry, of the roof that goes around this house. But right here you can see another dash line that's only out like six inches. It comes out, then it comes out a foot, and it comes around and it goes up here. Well, the, remember the water heater closet has its own roof. So that's the roof overhang of the water heater closet that you're seeing right there. Okay, so before I go on, I want to ask you all something. I always ask my class this. When you, were, when you were being raised, did your parents and the people who raised you, did they call the water heater a water heater or did they call it a hot water heater? Okay, so, you know, hot water heater, a lot of people in Texas say the hot water heater. Well, it's not a hot water heater. It's a water heater. If it was hot water already, you wouldn't need it. So it's hot water heater is, I think it's quaint, but it's not correct. And so I grew up with people that called that a hot water heater. And it took me a long time to break myself of saying, oh, well, there's the hot water heater. So that's just a, an aside. Okay, this is what your floor plan will look like when it's finished. It'll have that note that the wall thickness is four inches. It'll have all this stuff filled out. The scale, <clears throat> when we're done with this, is 3 sixteenths of an inch equals one foot. So if you measured 3 sixteenths on this after it's printed, that would equal one foot out there on the job site. So we even say floor plan scale, 3 sixteenths equals one foot. But you can see we have all our dimensions on there. There's that cedar post right there. We have a floor plan checklist, and this is in your book. This was new to the book this semester. You can see as you go through all this step-by-step -step stuff. Let's see. If you look on page 473, you'll see this checklist. Okay. And so it tells you some things that you should do. And it even tells you that there are 20 120 volt AC outlets. So you'll want to see if you can find 20 outlets in your drawing that are not GFCI. Two of those 120 volt outlets are GFCI. There should be three 220 volt AC outlets. So again, you'll be looking for all of this stuff in your floor plan as you go through your checklist. Okay. So this is that Revit model of what the front view of this cabin might look like. There's that eight inch cedar post. There are your porch steps. Here's the porch. There's your windows, the front door you can't see. That's the window over the sink. 
Here's the water heater closet. There's that porch that's six feet by four on the side. There is your foundation that is 18 inches tall. And remember I said the roof overhang? That is a roof overhang right there, that this roof overhangs 18 inches and it overhangs 18 inches on this side of the house, on the front and on the back. On the water heater closet, it, o it only overhangs one foot on this side and on these sides here, it o only overhangs six inches on both of those sides. So the next step after you draw your floor plan will be to create your elevations and we give you step-by-step -step instructions for how to do this and also we have videos. So let's look, here's your, there's that the roof for your, for your water heater closet. You can see it says one foot right there and on the side view you can see that the water heater sticks out six inches, I'm sorry, the roof sticks out six inches and it sticks out six inches over here. On your front view, you can see one foot six inches and one foot six inches. That's your roof line sticking out there. And then one foot six in the side view and one foot six in the back. It's a 1210 roof pitch here. But this 1210 roof pitch intersects with a 412. So you've got a 1012 roof here and you've got a 412, which is flatter. So this only rises four inches for each 12 inches that it runs horizontally. Here's your chimney, and the chimney, by code, if it's within a certain distance of the peak of your roof here, has to be two feet higher. So we've got, we're drawing the chimney two feet higher than this peak right here, and then the chimney cap is actually a block, and it is one foot four inches tall. So this window, this door, this window, this door, all of these are blocks that you're going to just plop in here. Okay, so here's what your completed floor plan might look like. And then that's what your completed elevation views will look like. Now, if you want to do some extra, like I said, we have a, uh, <clears throat> a foundation plan and uh, we have that mortgage survey. All right, so I'm going to show you real quick what is in Blackboard. So you log into Blackboard, scroll down, and Capstone Project 1 is here, and Capstone Project 2 is here. If you pick on Capstone Project 1, uh, there is an overview video, which is similar to what I talked about, except it doesn't talk about the cabin. It only talks about the, uh, the tow stop project. There's even a PDF you can read. It tells you what pages to read in your textbook. Then here's your prototype drawing. So you're going to click on that and open it and then name it Toe Stop Assembly. You're going to draw the details. And so we have a Toe Stop Project help sheet. We have a video on projecting the saddles, you know, where those cylinders come together. So uh, this help sheet, let me see. This is the one, let me open it up and drag, let's see if I can drag it over if you guys can see this. Am I still projecting? Are you seeing this? I hope you are. Yeah, it looks like you are. So this is the first sheet of the help sheet. This is the second sheet of the help sheet where you can see the miter box. And this is the third sheet of that help sheet. So that's what you see when you open this guy right here, that PDF. Step four, you're going to make a dimension style and add your dimensions. Step five, you're going to create an exploded isometric drawing. So this is your exploded isometric. Now we have a bunch of videos for those. And I just made a help sheet uh, yesterday. I'm going to click on that and open it up and just show you what this help sheet looks like. Drag it over here. This is what sheet one looks like of the help sheet. This is what sheet two looks like. Sheet three sheet four, five. And then what I was working on yesterday was showing you how to construct the cleat pin as an isometric. So it starts like this and you're going to add some details to it. You're going to add a chamfer to the front of it. Uh, you're going to add all this stuff to the back. And so I, I even show you with this stuff what it is you're going to be trimming. 
when you go to trim so that you wind up with this view right here. And so that's what how you get this guy right here. That's what all of this is about. Okay, so that help sheet is available right here. And then you also have the videos to do the to help you with the isometric. The next step in step six is to create an exploded 3D assembly. And there are videos to help with that if you need it. And it will look like this. And you, this line that you're seeing right here is actually a viewport uh, that just has the 3D model in it. Okay. You'll print this as, as a PDF and submit it to me. And uh, you should read through this when you're ready to print it because what you're going to send me is a PDF that has three sheets in it, or actually four sheets in it. Uh, I don't want you to send me four separate PDFs. You're going you're gonna to submit this as one PDF that has four sheets. Okay, So we'll talk more about that. That's what I'm going to be talking about in class in the next few days uh, when we log in. Okay, so now let's go look at uh, Capstone Project 2. There is the overview video, which is like, like I said, what I talked about today, but without Capstone 1 discussed. So you can watch that. Uh, you can read these pages in the textbook. Here is your prototype drawing, Art Cabin Prototype. Open that guy up and save it as Cabin Project. Make all those layers there, assign a color and everything, and then draw the floor plan. Now, the Cabin Symbols drawing right here, that is the drawing that you're going to open up that has all of the artwork for your blocks. So you're going to open this up and then you're going to block each one of those things and then you're going to insert those blocks into the cabin drawing so this is all going to be discussed in here and that's what i'll be talking about like i said in the the next week and the week after there's a video on creating a hatch pattern for the porch and the deck and then we're going to skip over step five you will do dimensioning there's a dimensioning help sheet, and then there's a checklist. Then there's a thing on drawing the elevations. There are some videos for drawing the elevations. And then there are a couple of help sheets you can look at. But your book, actually, let me just point to something real quick. If you look on, starting on page 477, <clears throat> you can see the side elevation. That's what you're going to draw first is the side elevation and then you're going to project to the front elevation and the side elevation starts <clears throat> on page 478 with step one what we do is we draw a wall and we draw the foundation and then we we start to construct the roof angle and so it takes you step by step through that construction and you can see like on page 481 by 481 we have the profile done then we start to add the blocks and things like that. So, um, you know, this is going to really help you out next semester when you go into, if you're an architecture student, if you take DFTG 1417, the residential architecture, you will already have drawn a complicated floor plan and you will have already drawn a complicated elevation of this house. That's going to help you. Just like Capstone Project 1 is going to help you if you take DFTG 1433, which is the mechanical class next semester. All right. So uh, there, here's the extra credit project for drawing the foundation plan. And uh, I'll click on that, open that guy up, drag it over for you guys to see. So really what you do when you draw the foundation is you take the floor plan that you've already drawn and you take everything out of it and then you add the concrete beams that are going to be in there. You still have your cedar post, but your cedar post is sitting on a 24 inch concrete pier. And then you have your porch that comes over here on the side. Well, it has two four by four posts and they sit on 18 inch diameter concrete piers. And so you have some details that you can add to that. This is what that extra credit project looks like. It's the foundation plan with some dimensions and then some details on it. Okay. 
Now, let's see. And then if you want to do another extra credit, you have the mortgage survey. And let's see, drawing the mortgage survey PDF. Let's see if I can open that guy up. Oh, sorry. Didn't look like it opened. There it is. So this is what the mortgage survey looks like. It's more like what <clears throat> surveyors draw every day. So there's the piece of property, and this is where the cabin sits on that property. If you've ever uh, bought a house, when you went to the closing of the house where all the money exchanged hands and everything else, there was probably a mortgage survey that also came to you in the records, and it showed you... Uh, your piece of property and it gave you the bearing of the angles on the lines and the length of all the lines and it probably showed where your house sits on there. So a mortgage survey is a pretty common uh, thing. So we, we actually have a video showing how to draw this. This is the kind of stuff you do in the civil class. So anyway, so uh, then you'll plot this as a single P, uh, PDF actually. So when you plot it, it's going to be two sheets plotted in one file, not two separate PDFs. It would be one PDF with two sheets. If you do extra sheets, you can add to that. So you get to all that by picking here on Capstone Project 2 or here on Capstone Project 1. And with that, I'm going to open it up to you guys. I'm going to stop.